DNF duel. That was loud. So DNF duel has had a variety of trailers that have come out over the past week or so that are specifically highlighting all the different functionality the game has between story mode, practice mode, local mode, and online to get an idea of what is involved with the game. The biggest question we were sort of having is that Oh, DNF Duel is a $50 game. That means it's going to be relatively limited in terms of its offerings, right? But there might be a, uh, a much fewer elements to the game than we were initially assuming. We don't know if that's exactly the case, but we get a little bit better of an idea from these trailers as far as like what's actually in here and what is going to be available. I thought DNF Duel is going to be free to play. Um, you would think, right? You would think and you would hope that the game would have followed a, a similar structure as the game it's revolving around, which is, you know, DFO, which is free to play. I very much wanted that. I wanted the, at least the multiplayer of the game to be, yeah, you could just play a few characters for free or just try a few characters for free or something like that. You would think that it might try to do something similar, but unfortunately, no. It is a traditional arcade, uh, arcade release style game in many ways. Uh, but let's check out the story mode. So yeah, they're going with like motion comic sort of stuff. Sort of like similar to a little bit of what Dragon Ball does with actual like really good artwork. Like this stuff does look great, but essentially is motion comic. But they do have characters like character models talking to each other. Some extra lore and stuff like that, you know? It very much, it very much resembles like whenever Arc System Works gets a pitch for a game in some way, it's like, okay, so what is involved? Like, what do you, what is the pitch for like the most modes are you, are we paying for? What things are we paying for? You know, stuff like that. Like the basic story mode slash arcade mode, you get your training mode, you get your online mode. Like, that's kind of what it is. Um, and it seems to be the case. It doesn't look bad. It just, appears to be exactly what we are mostly anticipating. There's a practice mode. Amazing. You can actually, for anyone that thought the game might not come with a training mode, people said this, <laughs> that the game's not gonna have a training mode. That's why there wasn't one in the beta. I was like, what the, what, okay. Anyway, there is a training mode. You know, you can actually practice the characters and, you know, figure out their combos before you jump online. Incredible, ridiculous and incredible. I'm looking forward to this, man, because there's got to be some extra dank stuff in the game we did not find. And it seems to be pretty much all the stuff we're kind of used to. There is uh, trials, so that's good. You know, at least we get uh, a, li a little bit of a primer as far as what is available. Neat. They teach you how to crouch and dash and backstep and jump. Wow. Wow. And it's pretty much the cookie cutter tutorial, right? It's the stuff that you kind of have seen in the majority of fighting games that have been around for the past like five years. There's nothing. It sort of is exactly what you would expect, you know? There's an arcade mode. Incredible. Absolutely mind boggling. Look at this arcade mode. I'm, holy shit, an arcade mode. Is that a different color on Berserker? I don't know. Maybe? There's a survival mode! I just realized we're looking at something different. A survival mode? I've never been able to survive. Oh. Oh, man. Crazy. This is crazy. It absolutely... Rate the frame rate, though? Yeah, these are definitely rendered at 30 FPS. 100%. Uh, and then there's an online mode! Oh, God! Now, like, the, the, bigger, the bigger question from the online mode, is this game going to subject 
everybody to weird chibi character lobby horseshit that uh something like guilty gear did for its online offerings is it going to put people through the meat grinder just to get matched up in a online situation that's like the biggest question and i wait i just realized uh what did it say ranked match ranking player profile replay library so there's not even lobby mode right it's not even lobby Find match. Okay, so it's like a queue. This is, this is, so we just saw it, right? They, they queue up right here. And then in, in from the queue, you can do several things. You can survive, you can arcade, you can toot, and you can train. So that's cute, right? All right, that makes sense. Crawling upon some new seeds. There is a proper ranking system. It tells you how bronze your ass is. Okay. Okay, oh. Yeah, no lobby though, right? The beta specifically had lobbies for like player matches and stuff. But this is online mode for ranked. Okay, so wait, hold on a second. This is just your profile, okay. Yeah, you, know, you can see all your stats, right? Everyone has their, their Capcom fighting network. Right, yeah, it's like you're, you're selecting an avatar, but for what at what point we don't see the lobbies yet your profile right right okay so you can see replays of everybody that's playing so that you know you can easily make content and put it on youtube in, in case somebody else that's really good and you can like you know immediately just go to their channel and record the matches and then you know monetize the shit out of it you know it's very easy cool Right? Uh, no lobby mode, though. No mode that actually shows the the actual lobby of matches. Nothing. Which is very weird. It's weird that they show the fact that you can buy the characters and stuff like that. They even show, like, the currency system and all this goofy stuff that you can do. Must be in a future video or something like that. Maybe because we already knew, I guess? I guess that's player matches and lobbies, right? It's funny, you would think it's maybe casual mode, but considering the fact that it's saying online and it doesn't include it here is a little confusing to me, right? That's a little confusing. I'm only slightly worried that everyone complained about the lobbies so much that they just deleted it. But the fact is that this does not include, you know, player matches. It doesn't include casual matches. They're like, they just read the feedback and everyone was so aggressively like against this lobby shit that they just went boop and just deleted all of it. Like, damn, we're pissing people off with this stuff. Let's just delete everything. <laughs> just removed from the game at that point. And I don't think that's necessary. You know what? I, and and uh, here's what I have to say. I am completely fine with your chibi lobby horse shit if it is the secondary option. If you're hanging out with your friends in a room in a casual setting, right? If the lobby aspect of it that involves your chibi ass characters is just sitting in rooms, then sure, I don't, yeah, whatever. That's absolutely fine, right? I, I don't care if that's the case, but if there is a situation like they show in this, where you can just jump in, click ranked, get a match, right? Jump in, clicked ranked, you get ranked up with somebody around your skill level, God forbid, and then you fight them, right? And make that process be as smooth as possible. Luckily enough, that is seemingly what's going on, right? And we're, we're actually, believe it or not, we're actually at a point where, depending on some games and how they have functioned in the past or Mark System Works, just getting this to work the appropriate way is a uh, shockingly high demand, right? Just getting a normal functioning basic like Street Fighter 4 era ranked matchmaking in some way is uh, weirdly unavailable for a lot of fighting games over the past few years, which has been very weird. So the fact that this exists is good. We don't know if it's like two out of three. We don't know how many direct matches you are going to be fighting somebody for. Please, dear God, let it be two out of three. But yes, uh, this, is, this is actually good news, right? That there is a traditional old school, just seemingly hopeful, hopefully functional, basic ass, just find me a match, let me train and do some other random stuff as we play the game. Once again, I don't mind the bullshit chibi lobbies in Arc System Works games, as long as it's not the primary function of getting this stuff to work. Oh, wait a minute, there was a community post. Yeah, yeah, open in new, in yeah, yeah, look at this shit, boy. Look at this shit, boy. All the characters are apparently in here. What the hell is this thing? Huh? There's the new girl. 
Here's the other new girl. Is this potentially another new girl? And then the new dude. Hmm. You, uh, you DNFers, uh, or you DFOers are gonna have to let me know what the heck is going on. But yeah, this is the guy we were technically looking at. The troubleshooter, I think is what it is. Uh, troubleshooter's up here. So I'm very, very interested, very curious. Here's the other new girl over here. I think I already mentioned that. Um, there's quite a few. So how many characters do we have at the start? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Is this 16? The bear is a puppet, so it's 15. Okay, I got you, I got you. You know what? We got 15 characters and possibly an unlockable final boss. I'm making a wild assumption there because it's weird that it, it ends on a, uh, it's weird that it sort of ends on a, uh, an odd number. 15 is pretty good. And that's, I, I feel like 15, 16 is like the absolute standard that a lot of fighting games need to come out with. I mean, I, I, I'm not making any official announcements here, but for anybody that doesn't know, yes, you're going to get seasons. <clears throat> There's going to be seasons for this game. They're going to come out uh, in the same accordance as like a Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Here's the thing you have to realize about DNF Dual Chat. The people that are putting up the money for this are very similar to Psy Games and uh, what they did with Grand Blue. This is almost an identical situation. You have this giant essential like other game property that is not a fighting game. And these, these companies that have an absolute metric shit ton of money. They just have so much money that they don't, they're like, we're gonna make fighting games, right? But that's, that's their conclusion. We have so much money bleeding out of our ears and orifices at any given time, we're gonna make a fighting game about this. That's what happened with Grand Blue, right? They turned Grand Blue into a fighting game and now it's still continually getting updated to this game, regardless of it really reaching a huge pinnacle of sales. It didn't become nearly as big as like Psy Games' Grand Blue uh, like property that they have, but it's big enough where they're still, they're still doing it, right? They're still, they're still getting our to make stuff. The exact same thing has happened with D DNF Duel. <clears throat> Who makes DNF? Like, Nexon? Neosan? Like, oh, Nexon owns Neopal? Well, shit. Right now, it feels like they're going to be kind of the perma developer that's going to be moving forward and adding new stuff to the game uh, for years to come. That's cool, because the game, at least right now, has a very fun honeymoon phase. I gotta give it that, like, some fighting games, in my opinion, have not had great honeymoon phases, and I'm, like, really worried, and I'm not really invested. But at least with DNF Duel, I am enjoying the game's honeymoon phase. Is it the most fleshed out fighting game experience in the world? Well, based on what we've seen so far, hopefully it'll be functional. Um, is it a game that I could recommend that, oh yeah, you should just drop 50 bucks on DNF Duel because the characters look cool and they got big specials? That is very difficult for me to do, but there is a few things in the game that at least are making me excited to play it. And I think all I could do is just show people why I like certain parts of this game, why I enjoy certain aspects and the things that are different from other fighting games. Uh, do I think it should be cheaper? Hell yes, I do. I think this game should be 30 or 40 bucks. I honestly do. I think, I feel like, I feel like 50 for a lot of the casual audience can be a very, a still a very high asking price. And do I think if we want to go to the extreme, do I think that the game should, the game's multiplayer should have like a free to try where it's like, hey, you get Berserker and Vanguard and uh, I don't know, you, Berserker, Vanguard and uh, Girl Brawler. I forget what his name is. You get like three characters that are just free and you can just play them. Hell yeah. Just give people a chance, give people a chance just to play the game in some way. I, I wish that shit existed.